Welcome to the YouTube channel for my new book, Seed of Israel, DNA Guide to Tracing Your Jewish Ancestry, available on Amazon in ebook and paperback versions. Uh, there's links below to order your copy. Also, be sure to hit that subscribe button to get more videos like this. In this video, I'm going to talk about my haplogroups. Um, in a previous video, I discussed my autosomal DNA, or ADNA, uh, results from many different admixture calculators. So, what are the Y-DNA and N-T-DNA results for someone such as myself, uh, who is a fully Ashkenazi Jew? Then I'm going to attempt to answer why Ashkenazi Jews generally plot on or near the Greek island of Crete uh, in PCA. So, haplogroups. Before I get into my haplogroups, I wanted to give a quick rundown of what haplogroups are, or haplotypes. Haplogroups, haplotypes, uh, same thing. Well, a haplogroup is a genetic population group of people who share a common ancestor on either the patrilineal or matrilineal side. Y-DNA is patrilineal, NT-DNA is matrilineal. So, again, yeah, Y-DNA uh, comes from the father side. Uh, mitochondrial DNA or NT-DNA comes from the mother. The Y-DNA haplogroup is passed down only from father to son. The son also receives the MT-DNA from his mother. The daughter only receives MT-DNA from her mother. So now that we know a little bit about uh, MT-DNA and Y-DNA, well, let's take a little bit, let's look into my results and uh, let's, see, uh, let's see what I'm made out of. So I took the uh, Y-DNA and MT-DNA tests with family tree DNA. So here are my results. Uh, Y-DNA. Um, according to FT-DNA, my confirmed haplogroup is R-L47. R-L47. R-L47 is a subclade within the r U106 part of the tree under the R-L48 group. The Y-fold tree gives an estimate that it was formed 4,800 years ago, with the last common ancestor approximately 4,100 years ago. So R-L47 is a subgroup of R-M269. The parent haplogroup, which is the parent haplogroup, and that age uh, of that haplogroup is 25,000 years. Um, it is found mostly in uh, Western Europe with low frequencies in Turkey and the Northern Fertile, Fertile Crescent. So this is R, R1B, is uh, what all these subclades come from. So, um, the frequency of haplogroup, what's the frequency of haplogroup R1B in the Ashkenazi Jews? Uh, well, the frequency of haplogroup R1B in the Ashkenazi population is similar to the frequency of R1B in Middle Eastern populations. This is significant. I'm taking this from uh, Wikipedia, and I'll provide links below. Uh, significant because R1B is also the most common haplogroup amongst non-Jewish males in Western Europe. That is the commonness of nominally Middle Eastern subclades of R1B amongst Ashkenazim tends to minimize the Western European contribution to the 10% of R1B found amongst Ashkenazim. Um, now that 10% uh, is from, a, I believe, a 2004 Behar study, genetic study on Ashkenazi Jews. More recently, there's a a uh, website called Levite DNA, which um, took a bunch of uh, samples of Ashkenazi Jewish samples from Family Tree DNA, 
which again is the company that I tested for, with uh, for my uh, YDNA and mtDNA. And they found R R1B at an 11.50% frequency amongst Ashkenazi Jews. So 11.50% frequency amongst Ashkenazi Jews, which is uh, with similar results to the Behar study. So I have, um, I've tested up to 37 markers um, on FTDNA. Now you can order uh, tests at uh, 67 markers and then all the way up to 111 markers, which is the most ac uh, accurate. And uh, you're going to get the, cl the closest matches through 111 markers. Um, now I'm going to just show you some of my results as far as my exact matches and uh, through the YDNA mar um, uh, uh, markers, um, 37 markers. Um, and you can see it's mostly Ashkenazi Jews. Uh, but really quick, I just wanted to go over uh, what well, what is a marker or STR? Uh, well, a marker is uh, this is coming from uh, the uh, definition is coming from Family Tree DNA. A marker is what we test uh, if Family Tree DNA tests in, our, in their basic Y DNA tests. The mar these markers are also referred to as STRs, uh, which is um, which stands for short tandem repeats, which are a series of repeating nucleotides. Uh, the letters A, T, G, and C. Um, the STR consists of uh, three repeated uh, segments. So the Y-DNA tests look for matching markers or STRs between two men. If they match, um, that would indi indicate a genetic relationship. So... There are some theories about the possible origins of my Y-DNA haplogroup, R-L47. Um, and they could be uh, Sephardic. Uh, there is definitely an Iberian connection. It could predate the Sephardim. Um, but uh, what my what my YSTR markers show is that, um, you know, I am. Uh, I do belong to the R1 this R1B haplogroup, which is predominantly found in Western Europe. Um, but I might belong to what is called the called the Ivanhoe cluster, which is thought to be the result of a Gentile Jewish union between a British or possibly continental Dutch or German man and a Jewish woman, possibly in the 10th century CE. Uh, I mean, I need, still need to do more research on this. So um, some of this is very speculative. I have joined the uh, Ivanhoe Cluster group, Facebook group, and uh, I'm looking forward to uh, more advances on, on this, uh, research advances on this, um, on the, uh, this uh, branch of uh, the R1B Hubble group. Um, but, you know, there does seem to be some indications that my Y-DNA could be at least partially Sephardic from the Iberian Peninsula. And that could possibly be, but be by way of the British Isles or possibly in North Scandinavia or Northern Europe, um, Germany or in the Netherlands. So, um, like I ran, I ran my allele values uh, from FTDNA through the Y-Filer haplotype database and I got some Hispanic results. Um, I also uploaded my YSTR markers to the YSTR haplotype reference database, YHRD, and got a high number of matches from Brazil and Spain. So there has been some research into an Iberian Ashkenazi connection. Um, there's an article titled Why DNA Evidence for an Ashkenazi Lineage's Iberian Origin. Um, so it, it says most genealogists researching their Ashkenazi families encounter brick walls in the paper trail. Within the past 200 years, uh, new re a new research strategy using Y-DNA Next Generation Sequencing, or NGS, allows us uh, allowed the researchers to go back further in time and in some cases discover a history different from the expected one. Uh, using results from Family Tree DNA's Big Y test, uh, they uncovered uh, just this kind of story uh, about a lineage of Ashkenazi Jews that appears to be set, descended from a man who lived in the Iberian Peninsula, Spain and Portugal, a thousand or more years ago. So, 
uh, the people who uh, uh, worked on the, on the branch that I'm possibly a part of uh, thought for some time it is most likely that they departed from Britain. Um, the big Y and STR results and STR uh, from Portugal and STR results from Spain and the Basque region uh, support the idea that they came from Iberia. Uh, there's no indication that they have a history before that of coming from Britain. Uh, so there are some conflicting results as far as where they come from. Do they come from Iberia? Do they come from the British Isles? Uh, the gentleman named Mikhail Rogoff, who's done some research on the Siphonhoe cluster, and he says in 2016 it was concluded that it is an Iberian branch. Uh, some descendants remain in Iberia. The evidence is present, present, excuse me, present on Y full. Um, it is both the Ashkenazi descendants and an Iberian descendant who has a history in Brazil with lots of documentation pointing towards accusations of Judaism in Olinda, um, which is, I don't know, I guess a state in Brazil, uh, Pernambuco, Yuko. So um, Rogoff writes uh, about the I Ivanhoe cluster that um, uh, the name of uh, the uh, origin of the name Ivanhoe is of uh, the project is derived from Sir Walter Scott's novel where British knight Ivanhoe defended Jewish lady Rebecca. So and then it says since R1B is a West European Y-DNA haplogroup, the Jewish component must have come from a similar Gentile Jewish Union. Um, so there's another theory about where my haplogroup or my subclay came from. Uh, and I, I'll link to this blog post below, but uh, this is an interesting theory. It says that R1B-U106L47 comes from a male line of Frank Frankish noble whose descendants are intermarried with both the Jewish Radonite, or Rodan, also called Rabbard, or Redbeards, of the Rhone Valley, and the Jewish Makiri dynasty of Siptomania and Narbonne. It says Gosselin, Gosselin, or Gosselin, or his father, Hervé, a Frankish nobleman, could be the Jewish founder of L47. And he says uh, his conclusion is that the L47 is a Jewish clan which split into Catholic and Jewish branches. He says, while he, while he thinks all, all, all L47 people have Jewish ancestry on the male line, it doesn't mean they are Jewish. It would seem, excuse me, it seemed that those that remained openly Jewish left France for Spain in the 13th century at the time of the expulsion of the Jews from, Fran from France. Some of them at the time of the Spanish expulsion in 1492 became Moranos and went to the Americas. Others who wished to remain openly Jewish went into the countries of Eastern Europe and had a tradition of being Ashkenazi of Sephardi ancestry. And then he says, however, some may have gone east with the Radonite traders and may have been in Spain at an early date in the 10th century. One Polish history states, quote, the first Jews to arrive on Polish territory were merchants who were referred to as Radonites. The Radonites were merchants whose trade extended over vast distances between East and West. They were fluent in Arabic, Persian, Greek, Spanish, Frankish, and Slav languages. Their, their entrance occurred simultaneously with the formation of the Polish state. One of them was Ibrahim Ibn Jacob, the author of the first extensive account about Poland. In the summer of 965 or 966, Jacob made a trade and diplomatic journey from his native Toledo in Muslim Spain to the Holy Roman Empire and Slavonic countries. So that's a little bit about my Y-DNA results. Let's talk uh, briefly about my mtDNA results. Well, my, and my mtDNA, um, matrilineal descent, my haplogroup is J1C14. Well, what's the origin of J1C14? So the mitochondrial haplogroup J uh, contains sublineages. The original haplogroup J originated in the Near East approximately 50,000 years ago. Within Europe, sublineages of haplogroup J have distinct and interesting distributions. Haplogroup J1 is found distributed throughout Europe from Britain to Iberia and along the Mediterranean coast. The widespread distribution strongly suggests that haplogroup J1 was part of the Neolithic spread of agriculture into Europe from the Near East 
beginning approximately 10,000 years ago. And uh, there's another site, a uh, Eupedia site, that says that I have my subclay J1C14 is mostly found in Central and Eastern Europe. Um, so, just, uh, and I'm going to show you some screenshots here, uh, just showing, you know, my genetic connections um, on family tree DNA uh, from my mtDNA side. And as you can see, it's mostly uh, Ashkenazi Jews, uh, similar to my um, Y-DNA results. Um, and just really quick, uh, the mtDNA consists of three regions. Um, so uh, you can see from these screenshots, there's two hyper-variable regions, HVR1, HVR2, and the coding region. So the uh, family tree DNA test, uh, mtDNA test, um, only uh, plus tests only test HVR1 and HVR2, whereas the mtDNA full sequence test, which was what I did, tests all three regions, uh, providing a more refined mtDNA haplogroup and matches list. So what is the frequency in Ashkenazi Jews of J, of the haplogroup J? Well, according to uh, the Levite DNA site that I, uh, I referred, uh, referenced earlier, um, the, AJ, the frequency of J in Ashkenazi Jews is 7.9%. Um, so, and this is from Wikipedia, and this is go, goes back to the 2004 Behar study that I uh, referenced before. It says the mtDNA, mtDNA frequency set forth here and are largely consistent with a data set considered another 2004 paper, D. Behar et al. mtDNA evidence for genetic bottleneck in the early history of the Ashkenazi Jewish population. So based upon 565 Ashkenazi samples that, quote, the most prevalent Ashkenazi mtDNA haplogroups were K at 32%, H at 21%, N1B at 10%, and J1 which is mine, at 7%, followed by other haplogroups at minor frequencies. So, uh, there is, uh, I did read that uh, J1C, J1C7A, and uh, so, so my uh, J1C14 my, it, it is a sub, uh, subclade, is downstream from um, J1C7A, which could be of Balto Slavic origin um, and could be a haplogroup of a person buried in the Kowalewko Luko Cemetery in Poland during the Iron Age. So, um, possibly similar to my R1B haplogroup, but my J1C14 mtDNA haplogroup could also have been the result of a Jewish Gentile union in Central Europe or Eastern Europe at some point in history. So, um, but again, I just want to reiterate that, you know, haplogroups are a very minor part of your overall genetic makeup. Um, I, I, I really do believe that autosomal DNA is, is much more uh, accurate and uh, as far as um, understanding the ancestry of particularly Ashkenazi Jews because it really shows our uh, Levantine origins and um, and kind of tracks our migration through the Mediterranean diaspora through southern Europe so and then up uh, up the Italian the Buddha Italy up to the Rhineland and then to Eastern and Central Europe. But, you know, we're still um, mostly a, uh, you know, a, a majority Levantine population with uh, mostly, and most of our diaspora admixture is from Southern Europe. But as these haplogroup group results can sh uh, show, um, you know, there, there certainly could have been some um, Jewish Gentile unions that took place in uh, elsewhere in Europe. So, um, oh, just wanted to also just uh, say that, you know, you can find, uh, point out that you can, when you do these genetic matches, you can find some interesting results. So one of my exact matches uh, through my mtDNA 
is with uh, Ellie Weisel's son, Shlomo Alicia Weisel. And I uh, got a, a genetic distance of zero with uh, family tree DNA. So um, I am a genetic match, an exact genetic match with, uh, with, with uh, Shlomo Alicia Weisel. Um, and obviously that's mtDNA, so it'll be on his, his mother's side, not through the YDNA through uh, Ellie Weisel. So I'm a genetic match with uh, Marion Weisel, uh, whose maiden name is Erster Rose, um, the mother of Alicia Weisel and the wife of the late Ellie Weisel. Uh, and then I just want to just end it with uh, just, just some thoughts on um, why Ashkenazi Jews uh, this is just a theory of mine as to why Ashkenazi Jews generally plot on or near Crete in PCA. Um, and as you can see from this screenshot, um, Ashkenazi Jews are generally um, in PCA. They plot east of Sicilians and South Italians and uh, a little bit north of Sephardic and Italian Jews. And as you can see, uh, the Cretan samples um, kind of cluster around um, the Ashkenazi Jewish um, sample on PCA. So we plot in PCA around Crete and, uh, you know, other Greek islands. Uh, so, but if our origins are in the Levant and we mostly mix with Southern Italians, uh, wouldn't we be closer to the Levant, um, possibly near Cyprus or maybe closer to Sephardic, a little bit closer to Sephardic and Italian Jews? Well, I believe what places us in Crete is that we have a bit more Northern European admixture compared to other Western diaspora Jews. Um, as you can see from this bar chart, Ashkenazi Jews have nearly identi identical amounts of Western, of West Asian, Southwest Europe, and Semitic admixture uh, as to um, Moroccan Jews and Sephardic Jews. The only difference, other than Moroccan Jews having more Druze ad admixture, is that Ashkenazi Jews have a little bit more Northern European admixture. So that extra North Euro admixture could be why we land in Crete. And thank you for watching.